This is the Wealth Ability for CPAs show. Better clients, better practice, better life. Here's Tom Wheelwright. When you think about who you are and who you want to be to the public, does that match what the public thinks of you? And that is called your personal brand. And today we're going to discover how to make sure that how we want to be thought of is how the public actually thinks of us. And we have the number one expert on this, um, Aliza Licht, who's written the book on brand, shape your narrative, share your vision, shift their per perception. And Aliza, it is great to have a personal brand expert on our show. Tom, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and to dig into this topic with you. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. How'd you, uh, I, I know a little bit about your story, but I know our, our listeners may not. How'd you, you know, get into start thinking about personal brand um, where you spent, as I understand, years building uh, a corporate brand? Yes. Great question. Thanks for asking it. So my background is in fashion. Um, I grew up at a time in fashion when print magazines were what everyone was reading. And, you know, working on that side of the business and later in PR, I really started to understand how to build influence and how when, you know, a magazine told you what to wear for the season, you listened to that because they were the arbiters of taste. And I spent my entire career, um, 17 years working for Donna Karen and building brand awareness for that brand, which was part of LVMH. And in 2009, we were talking about embarking on this newish platform called Twitter. I was a publicist. I was concerned that since Donna Karen is a person, but also a brand, people would assume she was tweeting. So I took a page from Gossip Girl's playbook, the original TV show, and I said, well, why can't we create this anonymous character that we can funnel the brand through and no one has to know who she is? And I ended up being that person. And I was a secret for two years. During this whole time, and a lot of people do this, Tom, you know, when you work at a company for a long time, your company becomes your identity, right? Mm -hmm. So I was Aliza from DKNY. One of the things that I advise in, in, in On Brand, but also my first book, Leave Your Mark, is don't suffer from last name syndrome. And last name syndrome means when you rely so heavily on the credibility of where you work that that brand replaces your last name so the purpose is purpose of on brand is to think about building equity in your own name because when i left left the company after 17 years and i don't have that title anymore and i don't work for that company who am i then and that is how on brand begins it's really a journey and you said it great in the beginning of self-reflection and making sure your self-reflection matches public perception and that your name means something. So this is really interesting with our um, audience here. Our audience is CPA. So we are kind of the worst branders in the world, right? <laughs> let's, let's be honest. And not you, Tom, not you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, but let's think about this because, you know, we think about company brand all the time and we're always focused on company brand. Um, and in fact, what I see a lot of CPAs doing right now is not putting their name into their company brand. Actually, they've got a company brand that is pretty innocuous. I actually don't like most of them. Um, I like name names in brands like Donna Karen. I mean, I think that's that's powerful to put a name in a brand. Um, but let's start there. So how do you do you separate the personal brand from the, the business brand? And if, if you're doing that, you know, how do you start establishing personal and how does that affect the business brand? All great questions. So just a clarifying one, actually, are most of the people you're talking about entrepreneurs? They are entrepreneurs. They own their own business. Right. Um, their business is small business. They're professional services, a lot of yeah. tax and um, mm -hmm. accounting, that type. And yeah. so um, what we do is, is that, you know, people... We are the most trusted business advisor for most um, most people is their CPA. And so, um, you know, there's, there is this um, feeling about, okay, can I, can I establish a business brand or do it, does it really need to be almost purely a personal brand? Um, you know, I mean, I've gone both directions, right? We have the WealthAbility yeah. brand, which is a business brand and it's got its own brand. Um, and then we have the Tom Willery brand, which is very much a, 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 a separate brand. 
Yeah. Okay. So let's just start by saying, and I think this is an important um, distinction. My definition of personal brand is when your name is dropped in rooms you're not in and you're thought of for opportunities that other people haven't even heard of yet, which means you have done the work to shape your narrative. You've communicated it to the people around you. They know how to be your publicist when you're not there, right? They know how to say, Tom's amazing. You should hire Tom, right? So that to me is both, yes, of course, we can talk about online presence and making sure your brand is visible, but I also really lean into people who are like, you know what, I'm not going to do social media. And I think CPA as, as, a, as a career is an interesting one because they're probably not going to be, you know, on Instagram or, or TikTok or all those places. And that's fine. We go in a different direction when we think about personal brand for people who are not on social media, which is all about executive presence and how you're showing up to clients and how you're earning social capital and how people actually think about your work. So there, there's a mix of it. Um, but to answer your question, the, the difference between a business brand and a personal brand to me is one and the same because you can't really separate, especially as an entrepreneur, people are buying into you as a person. There's a lot of people they can hire to be a CPA, right? So they've got to like you, they've got to trust you, they have to respect you and the work you do. So to me, it doesn't matter as much if you're focusing on, if you have wealth ability or you have Tom, but the point is the, the Tom part is has to be infused into wealth ability because without you it doesn't matter as much right so people have to think of themselves as the star of their own show and how they show up matters if they want whatever they're calling their company to have a reputation that they're proud of so, so here's one of the challenges that i think cpas have um we're a bunch of a students right um and so and and we like to be right I mean, that's kind of a, a general in the profession. And, um, but brand is really revealing who you are. Um, to me, a lot of it is just, you know, who are you actually? Not just who, you know, what do you want people to think of you, but are you actually that person? So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you get to that? How do you get to that who you are? I know you talk about this, um, about who you really are and, and, and then making that available to the public. So, one of the aspects of my book, um, I take the reader through what I call mental gymnastics exercises, which are actually workbook pages inside the book, although it seems like no one wants to write in the book, but my intention was that people would write in the book. Um, exercises to really take you through the thought process. So starting with what is your belief system? Every great brand is, is built on a belief system of core values, of mission, of purpose, like identifying that, right? The next thing is like your Venn diagram. Where do you have permission to play, right? Where, where do you have your brand guardrails set up? Meaning things that you want to lean into, maybe speak about publicly versus not, right? So establishing all of these parameters really helps the person understand how they're showing up, but most importantly, answering the question, which is really simple. What do you want to be known for in whatever circles you travel in, right? It's like, so one of the first gym, mental gymnastics exercises is like, if you were going to think to yourself right now, like three adjec adjectives that you would describe yourself professionally, would the people that work with you use those same adjectives if they were asked the same question? Or if I said to you, Tom, what's your superpower? Like, what are you, what do people come to you for? Like, what, why you? You probably have an answer, right? Mm -hmm. Then if you ask clients, would they have the same answer? Maybe they would teach you something that you don't even know about yourself, right? Sometimes we're lucky and people see a better version of us than we see our, uh, in our, of ourselves. So these are the sort of quote, uncomfortable exercises that people need to do to actually dive deeper. Because it's not just enough to say like, well, I think I'm X, Y, and Z. It's like, okay, well, does everybody else share that same view? Because if they don't, then it doesn't really matter what you think. Yeah, it, it's interesting you say that. So um, I tell people my mission in life is to make taxes fun, easy, and understandable. And I always get this look like, are you kidding me? 
you know, is that can't possibly, that can't be possible. But I was doing a podcast interview a couple of weeks ago um, with somebody and um, very popular uh, podcaster. And she goes, she gave me that look by the end though. She said, yeah, uh, wow. I'm starting to have fun here. I'm going. So, so to me, as long as I can, you know, actually exhibit that, and that is that is who I am. You know, to, I I think things ought to be fun. I, first of all, I think business ought to be fun. If you, if it's not fun, I don't know why you're in business. Um, but right. second of all, I think p- things ought to be simple. And so that's you know you for example, you ask what's your superpower. To me, it's making it simple. It's making it easy, understandable. And I love that. I love that question. You know, what is your super super power? As um, as uh, Dan Sullivan, strategic coach, might say, what's your unique ability? You know, what is it that separates you from everybody else? Is that? I mean, is that really what you're saying? Is that that really should be really is your personal brand, whether you like it or not? Yes, but well, you hit the nail on the head with one thing, which is people who are like, oh, I don't have a personal brand, like honey, you do. It starts with what makes you, you, right? Someone is consuming you and it's not just what you say and what you do. It's, it's your mannerisms, your attitude, what you choose to align with all the things together. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you're right, but I think one of the things that's really interesting about what you said with the word fun, it's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever put the word fun, no offense with taxes. Right. Similarly, in the book, I go take people through this um, section that says, like, don't bring your whole self to work, which is also counterintuitive because so many people are like, bring your whole self to work, show everyone every side of you, be authentic. <laughs> it's not about being fake. What it is about, again, going back to the brand guardrails of saying like, okay, you know what? Your whole self may not be appropriate for your clients. Your whole self may not be appropriate for the people you work with to see every single side of you. You know, we think back to Adam Newman at WeWork, right? He brought his whole self to work and that was bonkers, you know? So really understanding the parameters and again, asking yourself, is everything you're putting out there supporting whatever the North Star goal is? Yeah, my business partner, I used to say, never a bad day. So at the office, never a bad day. You can have a bad day all day long once you get home. But when you're at the office, you are not having a bad day. You are having a good day. And that's part of what we wanted to bring. That's the energy we wanted to bring to the office, right? Is that we wanted to say, well, look, we're going to be good here. Here, we're good. We can have a bad day somewhere else, but here we're not. Which also matches your brand guardrail of being fun. Because if the right. office is having a bad, if people are having bad days in the office, it ain't fun. Right. Nope, that, that's exactly right. So first of all, so how do you, you know, it, it took me a while to figure this out, obviously. How, is Are there any shortcuts to figuring out your personal brand and, and who you really are? So it, it, it requires a journey in self-reflection. And I have, you know, my book on brand takes you it's very comprehensive and if you put in the thought process and you actually answer the questions that i'm asking you will be good to go whether you want to build a social presence or you don't you want to have a podcast you don't you want to have a newsletter you don't what however you want to show up if you do put in the time to think about it you will be successful Um, i try to make it that comprehensive so that people can do the work and actually walk away really understanding themselves in a much deeper way because a lot of times we get just bogged down in like the to-do list but we're not thinking about how we ourselves are showing up when we're doing that to-do list you know you make a you made a good point earlier that um there are people who are going to be attracted to us um no matter who we are and why hide that uh, from people who we are. It's just, you know, my, I, I tell people, I look through a lens of, ro- I have rose-colored glasses and I admittedly do. And I like my rose-colored glasses. I'm not ready to give them up. Um, it's, it's part of who I am. It's why it's tax-free wealth. That's why it's fun, easy, and understandable. Um, that's, that's part of who I am. Um, when you, how do you help people embrace that? Because it's one thing to identify it, uh, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's another thing to say, you know what? I'm good with that. I'm okay with those 
rose colored glasses, or I'm okay with those, you know, with the black makeup, whatever it is, I'm okay with it. Listen, I think everything is a personal choice, right? But what people really have to get comfortable with is owning who they are and not just owning it, right? Shaping that narrative, sharing the vision and shifting the perception, right? So when we think about being able to make sure people understand what you're good at and the value that you add, that requires people to get a little bit uncomfortable and to talk about what they're good at. And, you know, we can put it in terms of introverts versus extroverts. Like extroverts have no problem talking about what they're good at. Introverts may need support from a peer to actually be their spokesperson. But the idea, I'm not trying to create monsters with this book. I don't want people talking about themselves all day. So I recommend for every one time you're sharing a win in your business or personally, you proactively amplify five other people and help them also you know, raise up in their, in their personas. So it's really um, a group effort, a team effort, if you will, but people have to do this work because it, it it's a responsibility, especially in the world we live in today, which is many times hybrid, many times on zoom, virtual, et cetera. You, you need to understand how you're showing up in every single medium. Yeah. So let's go to that. So how do we find out how we're showing up. So because we may have our own perception of how we're showing up mm -hmm. and it, it certainly can be very different from how other people perceive us. So how do we, how do we get that feedback? So in on brand, I actually take you through a little survey that an anonymous survey that you can send to your trusted colleagues, your direct reports, the people that work with you, know you and ask for feedback. You don't know the answer unless you ask for feedback. And sometimes it's not stuff you wanna hear, but it's gonna make you grow, but, but that's the only way to do it. So let's say that uh, you're, it's not what you thought it is, okay? So how do you adjust? How do you adapt to that? What, what do you do next? You go to the entire section on rebranding in the book. Um, you know, there, there is a process to rebranding to thinking about yourself in a new way. And it starts, you know, that audit, that understanding of like how you're being perceived is, is eye-opening. And then when you identify like where you need improvement, it actually becomes really easy to think about, okay, you know what, how do I counteract that thing? So maybe it is, you know, the way that you're dealing with people or an easy example would be, if someone was like, you know what, you're you're really unresponsive. It's really hard to get a hold of you. You know, I email you, I text you. You're you know, you're supposed to be my CPA, and you're you're just not responsive. It's like, okay, you know what? Then you need to rethink your communication skills and how how you are actually supporting clients, right? Because I think part of this is service oriented, right? And we think about service leadership. Entrepreneurs have to be servant leaders also to their clients and need to take the feedback and then reverse engineer how they can counteract that. Someone has bad reviews on Yelp for whatever their business right. is, right? Okay, well, let's try to get some good reviews. Let's make some great experiences and ask people to leave positive reviews. Let's, you know, go on a podcast and talk about, you know, what your, you know, what your business, help, how your business helps people. Let's get some local media. I mean, there's a lot of things people can do to sort of counteract what Google says. Got it. And that is powerful because Google is powerful. Uh, what, yes. what Google says and, and, you know, we all know that people only re leave reviews if they're really upset or they're extraordinarily happy. They don't leave reviews if they're if they're satisfied. That's true. And and one other thing I think is really important and going back to my premise that there really is no separation between personal and professional. You need to be thinking about your North Star professional goal at all times. There is no opportunity to just say whatever is on your mind on social media and not think it won't have an effect on your business. Sure. So how, how do you translate that into your, um, into the, the people you're working with? So, you know, I, I, I do find this, I mean, this is a challenge I've got. Um, and, and fortunately I have really, a, a really terrific team, but I find that, you know, people say, well, you know, Tom's great. What about, 
okay, but what about everybody around? Is are are they are they that great? You know, will will they do that? Will they exhibit the same um, energy or the same persona or the same positivity, what, whatever it is that I want to exhibit? How do you translate that into the organization? Well, I think there's two things here. One is that you know the culture that you're building as a leader, right? that is what has to infuse down into everyone. They have to drink the punch, right? So as a leader, you have to think of ways, whether it's it's really sort of that mentorship of really infusing that knowledge, infusing, you know, here's why you're here. These are our values. This is our mission. If every client walks away thinking taxes are fun, we have succeeded. I think there is a way to reward employees for actually living out that mission. You know, Google's a great example. They have peer-to-peer -peer bonuses. You can give a bonus to a peer for like stepping in and like doing a great job on something. And it's actually real money, but there can be a lot of different reward systems where not only are you as a leader recognizing people for living out the, the values of the company, but people can reward each other and recognize each other for actually doing a great job as well. That's one thing. The second thing, which is what I actually thought you were asking, so I just want to add this in, is that part of understanding about your brand in terms of a company is that if you work at a company, and even if you don't say where you work on social media, everything you say is still representing that company. Mm -hmm. So every single company should have a social media policy and a media policy whereby they can establish how they expect their employees to behave online so that when employees don't do that, you have a leg to stand on. So a great example would be if someone is you know, in their role and they're frustrated that Maybe they didn't land a client because the client went to a competitor and this person goes on LinkedIn and starts bad mouthing the competitor and saying like, oh my God, this, we're so much better than that person. Like if that were my company, I'd say, you know what? We don't, we don't do that. We don't bad mouth competitors. We don't, we don't talk about people that way, but you have to have a policy to be able to enforce that. So I think that's really, really important. If you want everyone to walk and talk the same as you do on behalf of your brand. So let, let's go one step further. So you talk about brand DNA, which is really, I mean, that is really what makes us, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how do you describe that? How, how do you actually, I, I want to just kind of finish with that because I think that is such a powerful idea that it can actually be part of our DNA. Yeah. So this is um, a luxury fashion concept, uh, my background where when we think about brand DNA, it's very similar to us as people, right? The initial inspiration, why you started the company in the first place, why your values are what they are, why your mission is what it is, what problem are you trying to solve or what twist on a concept are you trying to deliver? So in your case, it would be like, let's make taxes fun, right? So the initial reason for being is the DNA. And when you, when you establish all of those, and, and this goes back to in on brand, like what is your belief system? Like, what do you want people to know about you? There's a million different questions that I ask, but once you get that foundation going and you establish your guardrails around your, you know, where you can show up and where you shouldn't show up and how you should show up and how you shouldn't based on that foundation, that becomes your filter. So every decision you make going forward gets checked against your filter. So for example, if you are known for fun, making taxes fun, and that's your DNA, then you're not gonna get on this podcast and start talking about how complicated taxes are and how it's miserable and you have a headache from doing your taxes all day. Like that is not your DNA, that goes against your brand. So the reason why my book is called On Brand is that that would be off brand for you. You've right. established your fun. So misery and taxes, off-brand. So that's how we see it. So it's really the holy grail of what you stand for. And it's it's just that mental checklist of like, is this on-brand for us? No, this is not on-brand for us. We should not be doing this. 
we should not be aligning with this. We should not be partnering with this other company. There's a million different ways you can be on or off brand, but it really is meant to steer you in the right direction and keep you on the path. And what's especially important, Tom, is as companies age, you begin to forget the DNA, mm -hmm. right? Because you're evolving. So it is really important as new employees on board, that's part of the orientation. This is who we are. This is what we do. And that employees have refresher courses so that as you know, if people stay with you a really long time, it's like, let's, you know, let's go back into our brand DNA and let's just get a refresher as we start to, you know, bring new people into, into this fold. Um, it's something that needs attention periodically. So it's a great way, you know, a little quarterly reminder or a half year reminder of like, let's just refresh everything. Let's make sure our bios online and everything we're saying on our website is still exactly how we think of ourselves that stuff gets outdated every time i look at my own website i'm like why did i write that like i i literally find something wrong with it every time so yep. you do need to remind yourself you know another easy example like email signatures such low-hanging fruit for branding what do you want people to know in one second when you're emailing them the first time like where do you want them to go like why not send them there put a link in i love Watch it Watch my recent TED talk on fun taxes. I don't know something. Huh. So, uh, so I've heard a, a few really actionable steps here. Let's see if I get these right, um, uh, Aliza. Uh, first one is just ask yourself: anything you're doing, is this on brand? Okay, that's and everything we do is it on. Well, brand? sorry to interrupt you. Before we can ask ourselves that, we need to understand what our brand is, how we're showing up first, right? And then once we've established those guardrails, then we can, that's the litmus test. Got it, got it. That's the litmus test. And then I love the idea of onboarding that, okay, this is who we are. Um, is this, you wanna be part of this, but this is what we do and we live it every single day. Yeah. I think that I think that's I think that's amazing. And then I, and then the 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 other thing I heard was we need to remind ourselves, and we need to go back and uh, I have the same challenge with my website. <laughs> need to go back and challenge that website, challenge that social media. Did I really say that? Is that really what I want? Is that really I want to portray myself? Um, just wrapping up, in a nutshell, why do you think? staying on brand and understanding your brand, staying on brand. Um, why is this such a critical part of being successful as, uh, as, as a business or as a person? Because without you shaping your own narrative and consistently communicating it the way that you want it to be told, people will make up their own version of your story. I love it. Don't let people make up their version of the story. You need, you, we can be in charge of what we do. We, when we do that, um, we do end up with better clients, a better practice and a better life. And the book is on brand, uh, alizalicht.com. Did I get that right? That's correct. Website. Um, anywhere else you'd like to send us for more information? Hi. I, my website has everything there. I'm on all the social channels if people are active on social media. Um, I do consulting in this space for brands and for people. And I also do company talks to employees on how to do this within a corporate structure. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And thanks everyone. Thank for you. Thanks everyone for listening. Um, we don't often think of ourselves as CPAs as a personal brand, but remember our clients do. And, uh, and, and as, as long as we're coming across the way we want to come across, we will end up with better clients, a better practice, and a better life. We'll see everyone next time. You've been listening to the Wealth Ability for CPA show. Better clients, better practice, better life. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.